Good morning everybody, this is Craig the Computer Geek here and we're doing Friday Forum uh, this week with Brian Woodbridge from Woodbridge Flooring. G'day Brian. Oh, g'day Craig, how's it going? Yeah, good, good, good thanks. Yeah. Uh, this week, uh, talking to Brian as I said, and Brian uh, has been in the game for quite some time. Uh, how long have you actually been doing this, Brian? Well, I actually started in 1973, which is before quite a lot of people that are hearing this are probably born. Yeah, not me. I was, just, I was around a little bit. But... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, my bosses at the time, um, when I got into this, were trained in the old school, and um, they were fairly hard bosses. You didn't dare mess up. Yeah. And it was a, quite a, a long regime of training. They didn't just throw you into it and let you go. So you learnt, the, you learnt to do stuff the right way? Yes, that was a definite. Um, um, they, um, they were trying to bring standards in to the industry in those days and it still hasn't quite got there. There's a, the Australian Timber Flooring Association, which I'm a member of, have got st their written standards and the National Wood Flooring Association of Australia, which I'm also a member of, also have their standards and they're very similar um, and I've been passionate about this for quite a while because it's a non-regulated industry and there's a hell of a lot of cowboys out there. Yeah, so it's not the sort of thing that you really want to mess up um, because you know you can be looking at damage uh, and quite an expensive exercise uh, down the track. Uh, Brian, so what sort of um, flaws do you generally do and what do you try and avoid? Well, I do solid timber flooring, uh, installation repairs, re-sanding and finishing. Um, parquetry flooring, the same, installation and repairs and sanding and finishing of it. And I do cork tiles. Uh, I don't do bamboo or floating floors. Um, why, why is that? Well, they tend to be, most of the litigation in floor coverings is usually bamboo or floating floors. Yeah. Um, they are... Um, not of the same quality of solid timber flooring. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so is it because you, with the sanding of bamboo, it sort of doesn't... Yeah, that's a fun job if anyone wants to attempt it. I don't bother with that. I don't need to buy myself a problem. So um, I, I don't touch that at all. Uh, with the other floor, flooring, as in the solid timber, the cork and the parquetry, I do do all the different types of coatings. And I sit down with people and explain the pros and cons of all the different types of coatings. So they can make a decision on which one they think is the best for them. Yeah, so I guess yeah. um, the, the colour that you sort of think you get or think you're getting might not actually be the colour that you get after it's been laid down depending on the wood. It depends on the timber and it also depends on the coating because different coatings give different colour appearances to different timbers. So It's a bit of a trap for young players then, isn't it? Well it is and, and um, you know some of the uh, pre-finished factory floors you can never actually imitate those so yeah. when you do come to resand them down the track later um, you need to be informed that they will not come up exactly the same because it's not a factory that they're being refinished in so it's in the home situation and the other thing is if your floor is not installed properly you go and spend anywhere from you know 10 to 50 80 thousand on some of the big jobs on yeah. a timber floor it's got to be there for the life of the the building not for a few years till the guy that did it can get out of town or change his name to a different company. Yeah. So that is a, is a thing with the um, non-regulation of the flooring industry. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, you're, you're very particular about uh, what it is you do and, and don't walk on, uh, work on. So um, yeah. <laughs> getting a bit there with your, with your tagline, but you, I, I've heard you mention this quite a few times, but your tagline... Yeah. Uh, uh, well, my tagline is art you can walk on, and that's what I try and create. And while I'm on the job, the floor is mine. It's not yours till I give it back to you. <laughs> Just remember that. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it won't be sort of a cheap and nasty job uh, when you get Brian on it. Uh, it'll be done, and it'll be done very good. So yeah. um, moving on to onto some of the IT stuff, I, I guess, you know, you're on the, the sanders and polishing and that most of the day, but when you do... Uh, have to use those uh, dreaded computers. What um, IT systems are you using? Uh, well, I've uh, just the normal um, email and uh, 
and the internet as such in that respect and I've just started up on Facebook which I've learnt, got to learn to drive now so um, being uh, you know not such a young bloke and definitely not a teenager that just picks these things up willy nilly I'm a bit of a plotter but I'll get there with it yeah, it's it. Um, this, well, I guess that's the way things are going now, and um, you've had your own website now for for some time, and yep. and your own email address. Uh, one thing I have found is a lot of tradies, uh, you know, tend to go with the uh, standard Gmail or the or the Hotmail or Big Pond address mm -hmm. instead of their own name. Um, why did you actually? I guess you're a bit of a pioneer in that, even though you yeah you yep. mentioned you're not sort of all that up to speed with IT, but why did you actually um, bite the bullet and do those Well, things? it was oh, 10 to 12 years ago, probably, and um, I had made friends with an IT person that had given me some good advice and said that, you know, instead of just being, you know, Woody at Home Mail, then you should be Woody at woodbridgeflooring.com.au where you sell your own business and it's more professional and, and uh, it... Um, lends a bit more weight especially if you've been around for a while that yeah. you know it lets people know that you are around and you're not just yeah one of those cowboys out there yeah that's exactly right so talking about those uh, things what challenges have you found apart from you know being 2016 and just on facebook but what yeah. what, um, <laughs> what challenges have you found uh trying to get your it systems to work right um well I've just, um, I, I do rely on someone that knows about computers, you know, to, to help me out. So if I get stuck on something, I just make a phone call and say, um, I've come up against this, which way should I go with this? Usually uh, the things are quite functional and will let you know, but every now and then you can possibly go down a blind alley and end up in a bit of trouble. But as I say, being a bit of a plotter, I do take a bit longer and... Uh, tend not to run into as many problems as those that rush, I think. Yeah, so yeah. I guess it shows with your, your flooring work as well, you're, you're quite methodical and, and thorough with, with what you're doing, so... Yeah, well, there is an, an absolute method to the, the whole procedure mm -hmm. from way to go, including assessing everything before you start, because there are situations where a timber floor should never go in. Yeah. Um, so that's something that needs to be assessed on the job site before you do what, it. What examples have you come across for you um, in that situation? Yeah, buildings that are where the ground level outside is higher than the floor inside is a particular one. Yeah. You might go a few years without a problem, then you have a storm event and the water comes the in. The water will just run straight in. Yep, yeah. and water and timber make for a bit of a problem. Um, so there's, there's things like that, and, and a full assessment. You know, so, And even if there's a tendency for a problem later on down the track, if you do a proper assessment at the beginning, you can actually pick that out, advise the owner on, no, before this happens, this sort of remedial work has to go on, yeah. and, um, and then you won't have a problem. So um, it's all a matter of doing it right or don't do it at all. Okay. One other thing you've mentioned to me, Brian, uh, is about insurance and how important that is. Um, can you please uh, give us our listeners uh, a bit uh, more uh, in-depth understanding about insurance and how important it is when it comes to flooring? Well, it's not just flooring, actually. It doesn't matter what sort of trade person you get to do any type of work on your house. You have to ensure that they have insurance coverage. Otherwise, you, the homeowner, become liable. If something happens, if they have an accident or burn your house down, anything, you're the one that's liable if they don't have the insurance coverage. So it's a very important thing. Well, not many people would know that. No, no, it's not known. Um, but... The insurance companies know about it. Right. Yeah. Okay, so the moral of the story is make sure you get somebody who's got all the dice, eyes dotted and all the T's crossed and knows what they're doing. Yeah, that's right. So as I was going to ask you about some uh, general tips and advice for somebody looking at a floor. Um, you have covered uh, some of that, but do you have any other um, tidbits you, you'd like to share as we, as we finish up? Um, yeah, well, basic cleaning is, you know, um, you can use um, basic 
warm water, damp mop only with a little bit of white vinegar added to the water. That's probably one of the cheapest and most environmental cleaning products you can use. Yeah. Grandma used to use it before we became re-educated on TV <laughs> about newer this and brighter that. Yeah. Um, be careful yeah. of products that have silicons and and uh, waxes in them. Uh, well, they will contaminate. Yeah, yep, yeah, some of those products spray on furniture and wipe on furniture, polishes and oils are not good for the floor. They will contaminate the floor and when it comes time to refinish the floor coatings, you will have rejection problems. Yeah. So um, that's something that's not told and there are ads on the TV that says, you know, love your wood and use these other types of products and and, and people think, oh, if I can use it on my bench top, then I can use it on my floor. Well, I'm afraid you can't. Um, and those things need to be avoided on floors. As I say, a little bit of white vinegar and, and warm water and a damp mop, not flood mop, is the best thing for just about every floor covering there is. So, yeah. Okay. Well, that's been some great stuff there, Brian. So it's been great to have you today. Yeah. And uh, that's it for uh, this week's Friday Forum. Uh, so we'll see you all next week. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Greg. Bye.